All right, so it's been a while, but I'm back on Faith, Life, and Death. Hope everyone's been having a good early spring. Beautiful weather out. For real. I guess the groundhog got it wrong. All right, so I'm back on another episode of Faith, Life, and Death. I know it's been a while, but I hope everyone's been doing well. Our choice. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. John 5.24 So what does that Bible verse mean? That verse by John. I know what it means to me, but what does it mean to you? It means that God gives us that choice. He gives us that gift of free will. It means to seek Him. It means to ask Him for that forgiveness. I'm going to read it again for you all. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. John 5.24 So I want to do a little recap of what the author has to say about it, and then I'll go into my thoughts and we'll have a soul search. While God stretches out his hand and offers each of us everlasting life, whoever will may come, he doesn't disregard our will if sinners don't want everlasting life. They don't have to take it. If they prefer hell to heaven, that's their choice. If they foolishly say that they would rather have everlasting suffering than pleasure forevermore, they will get it. As preposterous as that sounds, people actually say they prefer, they prefer hell to heaven. The sick man in this story had been in that condition for a very long time. Why on earth would he want to stay that way, but Jesus asked him, Jesus asked him anyway. Jesus then told him to get up, pick up his bed, and walk. He no longer needed a sick bed. It's time for us to stop languishing on our beds of ease, set aside our complacency, and be about the business of sharing the good news of Christ. The secular life is unsatisfying to the true believer. It is fuddle, chasing the wind. We have a high calling, and this dying world is waiting. Soul Search have I had the revelation that the pleasures of this world are fuddle? Can you identify any areas in your life where you are chasing the wind? Father, open my eyes today to contrast between fertility of this world and the reality of what I have in Christ. So if we look at the world we live in today, especially today, there seems to be a lot of hatred, a lot of a lot of acts of evil. Don't get me wrong, there's some good. There's some good. We just don't hear about it a lot. We just don't hear about it. You know, on the news we see we see all the bad. But if we look at society, the way society presents life at us, power, lust, greed, We have a choice to make. And when I think about that, a lot of us, we fail to take self-blame. Self-responsibility for our actions. You know, I think a lot of us have that belief that if we go to church, if we believe, if we believe in Jesus, we say we do, that we automatically have that belief that we're going to heaven. But that's not the way it works. And we have a choice to make. Are we going to serve God? Or are we going to serve society? And that is our choice. God welcomes all of us to serve him. But how many of us are willing to do that? 
how many of us are willing to sacrifice our own pleasures for the pleasure of eternal life, eternal peace? Now, I'm not saying a perfect person gets to heaven. I'm not saying that. Because we all commit sins. We all struggle with something. Some of us struggle with greed. Some of us struggle with lust. Some of us struggle with selfishness, power, whatever it may be. We, we all struggle with something. There's no denial in that. But how many of us are truly willing to make that choice for God? To seek His forgiveness, to seek His love. How many of us are willing to do that? Because at the end of the day, we could all blame other people around us. But at the end of the day, it's our choice. When we're selfish, that is on us. When we're hateful, that is on us. And unless we decide to go to God and say, I need your strength, God will give it to you. That is the difference, my brothers and sisters in Christ. None of us equals perfection but we can seek it we could be examples of God we can be examples of Christ well let me re, let me rephrase that we can be an example of God's love we can be an example of Christ but how many of us how many of us are truly willingly to show that to the world Because when we do, we know we have a better chance of, re of reaching that eternal salvation, that eternal life. May God bless you all, and may God protect you in everything you do.